Hi everybody, welcome to part three of the Felix Blanket Crochet Along. So in this part three video, I'm thinking there's probably only gonna be one, um, but there might be an A and a B like the other ones. You are ready to straighten out um, what I'm calling the left side of the blanket in the pattern. And again, if you are a left-handed crocheter, your straight edge would be on your left side and so we would be straightening out the right side of your blanket. You should have the straight edge on the bottom, on the top, and then on the one opposite side. Um, I wanna just briefly say to anybody who skipped part two because you wanted to make a smaller blanket, I just now um, realized after I've edited all of my videos and deleted them so I can't go back and re-edit them. Um, you may want to check out the part two video a little bit because there's one um, slightly different when you make joins. Um, it feels a little bit different and I will go ahead and walk through that a little bit on this part three video but if you need to see it a little bit more you could watch the part two video. Basically to start the, this final panel, we need to um, start with four blocks. So the first thing I recommend doing is making a little starting triangle, kind of like what we did in part one, where we just kind of made this piece here and then we layered on this one. Um, you need that for this final part but the triangle dimensions are a different size so what you need to do is make something that looks like this so you'll make a four by four c to c triangle so just the usual c to c where you do the chain six increase um, come down chain six increase work up and so forth so you'll make a four by four triangle and then you'll change to a new color and then you'll work six rows with the new color so that when you're all the way finished, you'll have a triangle that's 10 stitches by 10 stitches and 10 on the diagonal. So I recommend making that triangle piece now. Um, that way you have it when you need it. Okay, everybody, I just wanted to show you, here's my little 10 by 10 triangle um, and yours should look like this four rows with one color, you changed colors, and have six rows with another. Um, I also want to point something out right now in case I forget to say it later. Um, you know, my starting tail's down here and my ending tail is up here. When you go to attach this block, um, you actually want to flip it this way. You want these loops to be on top of your blocks. So if you um, attach it this way, the loops will be on the side. And um, basically when you go to work your first panel on this side, you won't have any loops to work into. It's not a huge error. You just have to remove a couple of rows of work. But I just wanna make sure I remember to say, be sure to flip it this way so that the loops will be on top of your blocks so that way you can work right into them when we get there. The next thing we need to do is make this little piece. We'll make one of those right here and then we need to start this other block and it'll get joined onto your triangle. So this is just like what we did in part two. So if you worked part two with me, um, you might not need many more instructions other than that, but if you have not worked part two with me, um, I'm just gonna work a couple rows on here. And then if you need to see more about it or hear more about it, you can watch the part two video. And it's the first thing I do in the video. So you could just watch a little bit and work along, honestly, cause it is the same. Um, you'll just, when you get down here and join, you're just you'll just be joining a little 10 by 10 triangle instead of the odd piece so hopefully that makes sense so you'll get your new color and just join in this loop 
at this bottom stitch and you will start the row by making an increase so you'll chain six and make your three double crochets into the fourth fifth and sixth chain from the hook And then I need to turn my work and then I'm going to just work one, two, three more stitches up the side of this odd shape. So this is what I have so far. I have four stitches going up my odd shape. And now I need to make my fifth stitch right up here. While I make it, I'm going to join it to this stitch above it. So it is the exact same method that you've been using all along to join your stitches. It's just a little different because um, you're work, you know, you're joining as you're working up instead of down. So it feels a little different. And then, like I said, these stitches are the floating increase stitches. So the place that you slip stitch into is going to be different than what you've been doing. Um, but if it helps you to think about it this way, it's essentially the same because you still want to slip stitch in the corners, the shared corners. But I'll zoom in and show you um, what I do. So slip stitch into your next space and chain three to start your final stitch. Now to join, here's the stitch I want to join into. I have found for myself, I like to slip stitch into this bump of the chain um, from the floating increase. So not in you know, not in this actual loop, but in the chain stitch itself. And then make your three double crochets like normal. And then you do your second join. You could do it up here again on this bump, but I found um, personally that my work, it, it just didn't look as neat, and it was neater for me if instead of doing it at this other chain, I just moved it down a little and slip stitched into the side of this double crochet stitch that's beside it. So that's what I'm doing right now. So now it should look like that. Just like um, I said in part one, I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult for anybody who wants precise instructions, but you know, there is a little bit of flexibility with where you make those slip stitches. The biggest thing is that you need to aim for the shared corners. So in this case, it's the, you know, it's these two top corners here. So you want to aim for those same kind of relative places for the stitch that you're joining into. Um, but if you find it works, you know, there's a place that's a little bit different than what I'm using that works well for you and your attention, that's totally fine to do that. Um, but I would recommend trying to keep it consistent and slip stitching in the same place throughout your blanket so that it looks neater. Um, I know some people just skip these chain three loops altogether and they slip stitch into the base of these double crochets. Um, so, you know, just, you know, feel free to kind of play around with it a little bit if you don't like the way it's looking for you. But that's what I do. That's what mine looks like. And I found that that place worked best for me. Um, so with that, um, 
I'll do one more row. So we'll chain three and I'll zoom out. And slip stitch back into the side of this stitch. And then work C to C stitches back down. So it should look like this. And then all you have left to do to finish this block is we've worked one, two rows, so you need to make four more. So your first row down here would be an increase stitch where you chain six and build a C to C stitch. And then you would work one, two, three, four, five more. So a total of six stitches. And then you would join up here, just like I demonstrated here, and you would come back down six. And then you would do an increase where you chain six and build another stitch. And then you would work up, join here, and then come back down. So if you skipped the part two, I would recommend just finishing out this block. Um, if you're having trouble with these joins, you could rewind and watch me do it again on this video or you could go to the part two video because I do work the block completely on camera in that video so and it's the exact same so you could just watch that one so I've finished this first little small block to set up for the final panel the next thing you have to do is make a uh, block that's going to fill in right here and again, for anybody who skipped the part two videos, I will do just like a quick kind of demonstration. But if you feel like you need more detailed information about doing this block, please go back and watch the part two videos because I do go through the whole thing very thoroughly. Um, and I'm sorry I didn't think about that when I was editing and kind of deciding how to make these videos. Um, but I just don't want to spend a lot of time recording myself doing things that I already did really thoroughly. Um, so it's really the same thing, you know, you're just going to work stitches all the way up, but it just looks a teeny bit different right here because these stitches um, are ones that had the floating increase, so they have that loop on the bottom, and then you made the chain three decrease, so they also have a loop on the top. So they're just a little bit bigger than your other C to C stitches. So um, sometimes when you get up here, it just looks you know, like a little bit of a bigger gap, but it all pulls together um, nicely. And I don't think there's really any issues with it, um, but you just might find that it looks a little different. But essentially um, we need to work four rows. So you'll attach your new color. You'll come all the way up, join at the top like we've been doing come down for row two, work all the way up, join at the top, and then come down for row four. On row four, stop one stitch before the bottom because that's where you'll join in the triangle piece that you've already made. So I will work this first row on camera for anybody that maybe needs to see it. And a lot of you hopefully don't need to see it and you can just fast forward or ignore me. <laughs> um, so just attach your new color and then you're going to do a chain six increase. To get your first C to C block made. And then I need to turn my work and I'm going to work up this green. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. And I'll stop at that seventh one just to kind of show you what I was talking about with the bigger jump.
So I just made my last stitch on top of the um, that dark green color block. And then this is just what I was talking about. There's just a little bit of a bigger gap. Um, something about just having this loop down here from the floating increase. And then the way that we joined um, the stitch into it, it just looks like there's a little bit of a bigger um, space right here, a little bit of a bigger jump to make. And I just wanted anybody who's just extra observant about your work, I just wanted to point out that mine does look like that. If you notice, yours is doing that. And hopefully, um, so I'll go ahead and make the next stitch. You can also kind of see that as you just kind of start working, it just pulls together and then you don't really notice that there was ever a bigger space to fill into. And I've been using my original Felix blanket. We use it all the time. And um, I, d I don't ever notice any big gaps or anything weird with it. So hopefully that gives you some assurance that it'll be fine. So I've arrived again at the top. There's one more stitch to make. And this is where you join it up here, just like I demonstrated with that dark green color earlier. Um, so slip stitch and chain three. And this time I'm gonna leave it not zoomed in in case that helps anybody to see it differently. But I'm just gonna slip stitch right over here in the corner in this um, loop of the chain stitch. And then I'm going to make my three double crochet stitches like normal. And I'm going to make my last join and I want it to be in this other corner. And I like to slide it down a little so that I'm actually making it into the side of the double crochet as opposed to in the chain loop like I did for the first slip stitch but it's a little bit of a preference thing up to you, so it's okay to change the placement a little if there's a spot that works better for you. I'm gonna chain three, turn and slip stitch to start coming back down. I'll make the first block. So you should have something now that looks like this. So you're going to work 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 stitches down. You'll do a chain 6 to increase and work up. So you'll work up 12. And then you'll join into this block up here. And then you'll work down and you'll stop at this stitch right here um, when you're coming back down and that's when we'll join so i'm going to go ahead and make my row coming down my next row going up and then coming down and i'm going to stop at the second to last stitch and come back and show you attaching the other piece all right so i finished those four rows like i um, mentioned and i stopped one stitch prior to um, totally ending the fourth row. And this is where you join in this little triangle that you made. And it's just like you did in part one. There's nothing new. Um, I do remember <laughs> to tell you guys, make sure you flip it. Um, your ending tail is gonna probably be down here because you want these loops you want to be able to work up this way. So make sure you have your triangle oriented in the direction that allows that to happen for you. And so then you're just going to slip stitch into this last stitch like you did in the other parts, chain three, and then pick up your other piece, slip stitch. I just go into the chain three loop, complete the stitch by making your three double crochets
and then finish the join by slip stitching I just go right into this double crochet stitch so now they're attached so you can chain three and then I like to turn my work and slip stitch I'm gonna make the first stitch because I feel like it's easier for me to lay everything out So, it's getting hard for me to fit all of this on here. <laughs> you should have something that looks like this. So here's your final edge, and then you're gonna go ahead and work. So this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. On the twelfth stitch, you're gonna make a join right in here and come back down for 12 and attach down here at the bottom um, so again anybody who skipped the part two videos this is from this point on the blocks on this side you will always be working up 12 attaching at the top working down 12 attaching at the bottom so all the way every block from here on out until you get to the very top and you want to start um, straightening out the top that's when it'll change um, so I'll go ahead and finish these last two rows and then I'll come back on to explain this side, but you guys probably um, can do it without my explanation because it's just, you know, standard C to C keeping this edge straight, um, but I'll just go through it just to be extra thorough. So once you complete this um, block here, your blanket is all set up for the final panel. The only thing you have left to do is to layer on the repeating blocks and you need to make the same number of blocks that you made in part one and part two. Um, so all of these blocks you, you make from here on out until you get to the point where you wanna start straightening out your edge are gonna be made exactly the same way. So to make these um, left side blocks or your final side blocks, straight edge blocks, You'll join up a new color and you'll work one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine C to C stitches. Then you'll do chain six increase and you'll work down for 10 and join at the bottom. You'll work up 10 for row three. You'll do an increase and work down 11 for row four. You'll work up 11 for row five, do a chain six increase and come down 12 for the final row, the sixth row. So this is what you should have after you complete that first um, left side straight edge repeating block, six rows and just attaching at the bottom each time and just building the straight edge at the top each time. And then now um, to work this repeating block for the inside, um, the right side of your blanket. You will attach your new color down here and you will work up 12 and join at the top and you'll work down 12 and join at the bottom and you'll just repeat that for six rows, joining at the top and joining at the bottom. And then when you're done with that block, you'll go back and you'll make another one of these. So go ahead and complete all of those repeating blocks and then I will come back um, and show you how to square off the top. All right, everybody. So now you just have a couple more blocks left to do. And some of you might already have the hang of it and know exactly what you need to do. Um, it's pretty easy. It's just like we've done in the other two parts. You'll square off. It'll take four blocks to complete the whole process. Um, so you know you're ready to square off when you have 
made the same number of repeating blocks as you've done in the earlier parts. Also, the last block you make should be a right side block, and it should look like this when you get to the top. You have one more um, C to C stitch left to go. And then the first block you make to square off will be a left side block. So um, the only thing that's really different is you'll go ahead and you'll work this left side block like normal, but it'll be like an incomplete block because you'll start decreasing. So you'll start in the usual place and then you'll work up one, you'll do your uh, chain six increase and come down for two, you'll work up for three, do your chain six increase and come down for four, and then when you come up on the fifth time, that's when you're level, and that's when um, you will slip stitch into the stitch beside and do the decrease and come down. So I will work um, four rows, and then I will start coming up on the fifth row, and I will come back on the video just to show you what mine looks like so you can compare um, and make sure you're doing everything right if you need that. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. Hopefully you can see I worked the one row up, increased, came down, joined, worked the third row up, increased, came down, joined, and now I'm on row five and I'm coming up. And this is, this is the top of the blanket. This will make it be the same size as the right side. So I only need to do one more stitch to finish this row and then slip stitch into the... Um, stitch beside it. So I'll complete that now. So I made my last stitch. I'll slip stitch into the stitch beside it. Make a chain three to decrease and slip stitch to start working back down and I've started my straight edge. So that was row five. So all I need to do is work down this final row six and attach at the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and work that last row and attach at the bottom and then I will come back on and talk about the rest of the squaring off blocks. Okay, so I completed that last row for this block and then the rest of this should be really familiar because it's exactly the same um, as squaring off in the other two parts. Um, I need to do a right side block. So I'm gonna turn my work. And then start my next color in the usual place. I'll work up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times and then slip stitch into this one and come down and join work up eight and down and then work up seven and down so i'll go ahead and work that and i'll just come back on real quick so you can see what my block looks like in case you would like to compare to yours so after you complete that block it should look something like this and then you need to return to this side with the straight edge to work your final block on that side. And you'll start in the usual space at the bottom. Work up one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. Slip stitch, come down and join. Then you'll work up five and come down and join. And work up four and come down and join. And again, I'll come back and show you mine after I finish that block. All right, everybody, you have your last block of your blanket left to do. If you're anything like me, it was exciting and just a little bit sad to be finished with this project. Um, I hope that you guys had fun working on it. This last block is made just like the, the last block of the other panels. I do need to turn my work before I start. And then um, I'll join here and work up one, two, three, slip stitch to join, come down three, 
work up two, come down two, and this is where it just looks a little um, tricky. So just make sure you pay attention. You'll work up one, slip stitch to join, and then when you go to come down, you immediately start joining into your last stitch. And I do show that on part one and in part two. I'm not going to show it again on this one. Um, but after you finish off your last block, I'll come back again and just show you what I did for my border if you would like to do that for yours. All right, everybody, the last thing to do, well, maybe you might have to weave in some ends, um, but after that is to decide if you want to put a border on your blanket or not. And I actually think this blanket looks really great without a border. Um, however, after a lot of thought, I finally decided to put a border on mine and I do not regret that I did it at all. I chose to keep the border really simple and I love the way it looked. Um, I just wanna say that in the Felix Blanket Crochet group, there have been a lot of just really different and interesting borders. They all look great. Um, so feel free to search around in that group or on social media to find some other um, border ideas. People have done thicker borders, people have done, you know, colorful borders, um, and they all, everything just seems to look really nice with this blanket. But I'm gonna show you the border I did in my original blanket. Um, like I said, it's, it's just a really simple, nothing fancy border. And um, I feel like I need to acknowledge, I have not been weaving in my ends, and I'm gonna be kind of lazy, and I'm not even gonna put Put the border on this whole thing um, but the reason is because mine if you can't tell is just a really weird dimension and I haven't figured out yet what I want to do with it and so I don't want to finish it off too much because if I decide as I hate to say it but if I decide to frog a little bit of it to get it to a different size or something I you know it'll just be easier for me um, to do that so I'm gonna try to be a little creative with how I show you the border what you need to do is decide on a color you want to use and then um, I recommend starting just somewhere along one of the edges not at a corner so I'll just start um, maybe right here and I'm just going to insert my hook right in the gap between the two C to C stitches and I'm going to pull up a loop you could also fasten on your yarn using another method if that's what you prefer um, but remember, I like to just drop a loop and make a little chain. So then chain one, and that does not count as a stitch. And then single crochet in that same gap. Next, chain three. And then go into the gap between these next two single or next two C to C stitches and work a single crochet chain three, go into the next gap, single crochet, chain three, and hopefully you guys understand. So basically from there, you're just gonna keep repeating those directions all the way until you get to your corner. And then while I'm doing that, I thought I would just say, you may find if your tension is a little different than mine, you know, maybe you used a much bigger hook than I did. Um, it might work better for you to chain two, and that's okay. So there's, a, like with the slip stitching to make the joins, there's a little bit of flexibility. You could adjust it if you didn't like the way um, it was looking for you. But I did chain three all the way around with one exception and it's because I wanted to be really careful that I had nice, um, just nice clean looking corners. And so I didn't want there to be too much bulk in my corner. So I made one minor adjustment and I'll show you, I'm just about there. So I've been single crocheting, chain three, single crochet all the way along the edge and now I have these last two blocks left. So I'm gonna chain three, single crochet in between these last two blocks, 
And now for right here, I'm just only going to chain two because there's just not as much space um, because I don't have a gap right here anymore. So my single crochet is just a little a hair closer. So I didn't want to chain quite as many. And then you just kind of need to find the corner of the C to C stitch of the edge of your blanket. So I'm going to do it um, right here at one of these little uh, turning chains. But I'm just going to go ahead and make three single crochets. So it looks like that. I'll make three to make my corner. You may want to put a stitch marker in the second of those three single crochets. And then I'm just going to, for this very first one again, I'm going to chain two and then single crochet in between the C to C stitches. And then from here, I'm going to go back to my chain three and single crochet between the C to C stitches. Chain three and single crochet between. And I'll keep repeating this all the way down this edge until once again I get back to the corner. And then just like I did at that first corner, when I make that, that last single crochet right here and I have this one remaining block left, I'll just only chain two that time. Make three single crochets right in the corner of my blanket. Um, and then chain two, single crochet, and then go back to the chain three, single crochet. So keep doing that all the way around your blanket. And then this is where, like I said, I'm gonna get a little creative. So I'm just gonna pretend like I've been coming around. So now I'm almost back to the beginning. So I'll chain three and I'm going to slip stitch into my single crochet stitch. So I'm going to skip that starting chain one, slip stitch into my single crochet stitch, chain one, and then make a single crochet into the single crochet stitch. And then I'm just going to insert my hook into this chain three loop and make two single crochets and then single crochet into the single crochet stitch and then make two single crochets into the chain three loop, single crochet into the single crochet stitch, two single crochets into the chain three loop. And then I'll just keep doing that until I get to the corner. So I've got to work a couple more of those. So. I'm here, um, I've got, I made a single crochet into this last single crochet stitch and now I'm at my chain two. So I'm gonna make two single crochets into that chain two space. And now I have my three single crochet stitches. And the loop that you single crochet into for right-handed people, I'm guessing if you're left-handed it's reverse, but I don't know <laughs> for sure. Um, the loop is actually just to the right of the stitch. So you can see the little V and there's the loop. So here's the first single crochet stitch. I'm gonna work one stitch into that one. And now I'm at the middle one and I'm gonna work three into that one. And then I'm, I've got the last, I'll work one into that one. And then now I'm at my chain two space. So I'll work two. And then I'm at my first single crochet. 
and I'll work one into that one. And then I map my chain three, I'll work two into that one, and then one into the single crochet, two into the chain three, one into the single crochet, and so on until I get to the next corner. And just like with the first corner, when you get to that second of the three single crochet stitches, you'll put three into that one. And then you should end up with just a simple little border and a nice round corner that should be pretty flat. Um, and then you would just fasten off and be totally finished. I just wanted to say thank you for, um, again, to all of you for just your, I don't know, your excitement about this blanket. I really appreciate um, all of the kind messages I've received about this blanket. I love seeing your guys' pictures. Uh, it just really um, touches my heart that so many of you really enjoy making this blanket, that you've gifted it to people who have loved it. Um, it really means a lot to me. I hope that these videos have been helpful to you and that you have um, enjoyed making this project and hopefully there's no more problems. But um, as always with any of my patterns, not just this one, if you're running into any kind of trouble, please don't ever hesitate to reach out and ask me a question. I would love to try to help you as best as I can. Um, I, I want you to find joy in, in making my patterns and um, not be, you know, stressed out and um, frustrated and, and things like that. So don't ever hesitate to ask. And I would love to see your blanket once you're finished. So if you use social media, feel free to post it, um, Facebook or Instagram, and tag me. I'd love to see it. Thanks again for being here. Bye.